Live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering Enterprise Connect 2019. Brought to you by Five9. Hello from Orlando, Florida. Lisa Martin with theCUBE. Stu Miniman's here with me as well. We are at Enterprise Connect 2019 and we've been graciously hosted this week by Five9. We're pleased to welcome to theCUBE for the first time the VP of Product Marketing from Five9, Scott Coleman. Scott, thank you so much for thank joining you. Stu and me today. Great, nice to be here. So day three of this event, biggest enterprise connect that they've had, 6,500 attendees expected. We're in the expo hall, which you can hear all of right. the buzz behind us. 140 or so exhibitors announcing new products, new services, et cetera, all talking about putting the customer at the heart of the contact center. Why is that so important? No, it's a, it's a great question, and, and to your point about the, the show itself and the floor, Really, the contact center is very much at the center of actually the floor itself in terms of who's here, what they're talking about. It's not an afterthought. It's really, um, I think it's an acknowledgement that companies are realizing that they have to take the customer experience seriously. And the contact center is that point where you either reinforce the brand or you erode it, right? So this is now the opportunity for, for companies to think a little differently about what role it plays and uh, how they're going to use it to really build a better relationship. Yeah, Scott, it's been interesting. Lisa and I came into this show being the first time that we've been at the show, but you know, we're both consumers. We've looked through it. You know, I think back to the last you know, decade or so, there was outsourcing, there was technology, which right. was just going to say, uh, you know, some of the big technology companies, if I want to call them, are you kidding? You can't. Right. They hide that. I can't even email them if I, right. I wanted to it. You know, the, so the customer relationship is very different. But today, it feels like the, the, the pendulum has been swinging back the other way. Right. Right. That, that customer relationship. We know when I need to talk to somebody, it's important that I do get right. to talk to uh, a person and technology is an enabler uh, of that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, you know, and the, the question is why? What changed, right? And there's a couple things that really changed to make that uh, happen. The, probably the primary thing is customers had more choice and they have a voice, right? They have more choice than ever before. It's no longer the, the issue, depending on whatever industry you're in, that you're only stuck with a certain cable provider or a retailer down the street. I can buy from anywhere in the world. Uh, you know, and so I have choice there. There's uh, disruptors in every industry, as we've seen over the last decade. And so that, that's one element. And, just as importantly, they have a voice. It used to be that I could go home and complain to my, uh, to my wife, I could complain to my family members, my friends. Now, I can actually amplify that through social media and other elements. So, not only do I have a uh, ability to move, but also, in terms of the, um, the voice, I actually have a bigger impact on the brand, right? And those That's are really big influence. elements there. Yeah. So, along those lines, we, if you look at the consumer behavior is being so influential. Companies, are they looking at it as a, more of an opportunity to go, all right, maybe we have a few channels, maybe we're voice only. Right. Um, what, how does Fineman help a customer that might be voice only or maybe multi-channel get to omni-channel so that they can, as I loved what you said, you know, this contact center moment in time right. is an opportunity to improve the brand or erode it. So how are they working with you guys to enable a customer to be able to have their issues identified, resolved quickly through various channels? Yeah. Well, I think the first thing is when you look at omni-channel is why. What ultimately you want to make sure that you're engaging with your customer over the channel and the method that they prefer, right? That's the most important element there. So it's not about having 10, 15 different ways to communicate, it's letting them do it when, where, and how they choose to. That's the most important thing. And then it's also then understanding what else do they expect? Well, the first thing they expect is they want, to, they want you to know them. You know, our research uh, that we've done through our, our customer service index and the like, consistently shows that people, the first thing they want to know is know me, understand my relationship. So when we work with our, our customers, we really focus on that. As they engage over a phone call, an email, a chat, another channel, always make sure that you, at the heart of it, you understand who they are. And one of the ways to do that is 
draw that information and make it available to the agent. So integration with CRM systems, with workforce optimization and others is critical so that when they're at that point of engagement, that moment of truth, they're able to um, acknowledge the customer and probably have a really good understanding of not only their history, but why they're, why they're engaging with you, why they're calling or, or contacting you. Yeah. Uh, Scott, we, we had a great conversation with Darrow, who's part, part of your team, about how cloud not only enables the, the, the speed and agility, but you know, I could start using new features much faster and right. easier uh, than in, in a non-cloud environment. I wonder if you might have some customer stories to help illustrate some of these journeys as to you know, maybe just what they've gotten from day one, but also you know, subsequent to your customers that have been with you for a while, so right. things that they keep innovating and uh, adopting new things along the road. Well, you know, it's funny, I, I, I think of a couple examples. Uh, one, we had a customer who, newer, a newer company, uh, a bit of a disruptor in their industry, and they actually started out with digital channels only. They had no voice. So they were offering email and chat and other methods, and then, to their surprise, they found that they needed to introduce voice. They were dealing with more millennials, folks that they assumed were going to communicate over the chat and so yes. on. Right. Well, what happened was there were certain times when they wanted to actually communicate over a voice channel. Maybe it was a financial issue. Maybe it was uh, emotionally charged or something like that. So they brought that in. So we were able to help them by integrating in first to their, their uh, CRM to be able to do digital channels and then open up voice. Now the other side of it is we have customers who will start maybe with a voice channel and then they, um, and again, understanding your customer, your end customer, what do they want? Uh, introducing uh, a chat and making sure that those agents have all the relevant information they need to be able to do that. Uh, realizing that email is still around after all these years, there's sometimes you want to communicate that way because you can send a lot of information. So it's really about building out a plan with the customer, understanding what is that customer journey of their customer, and how do they best a, a treat it and help them along the way. On that customer journey front, I'm wondering, are the majority of customers that you're meeting with not aware of their customer journey and their customer preferences for different channels? Is that something that you're finding that you're actually, from a consultative perspective, saying, actually, what's ideal here is to really not make assumptions um, and to actually do some investigations and some right. studies to learn? Is that yeah. part of the, the process with you guys? It's a little bit, a little bit of that. Um, it's also sometimes that there's a journey, purchase journey, a service journey, an account management journey, you know, the change, change uh, certain things about your, your service profile. But it's, it's been developed over time just through kind of osmosis, right? And so sometimes it's stepping back and understanding what is that, defining that journey, and saying where are those critical paths where it may break down, where problems occur. So really drawing from that and understanding where are those points where we can actually uh, and I say we being with the customer, help them to be able to make that better. Overcome uh, frustrations and delays and so on. So that's a really important element there. Uh, in terms of like, channels, it's really just listening. Listening to customers, listening to the agents, listening to people that are on the front line talking to customers day in, day out. And, and realizing also, what's the profile of your customer, your buyer? Um, you know, not everybody's the same. And it doesn't always fit based on age or other demographics. You know, I have a, I have a my father's 89 years old and we, we text message all the time. You know, and once he embraced that, it's a wonderful method of communication. Uh, so, it, it, you know, there's a lot of things you have to look at along the way. Right. So Scott, one of, the, one of the biggest challenges in technology is we need to balance simplicity with the customization and all of the choice in the world. Right. Uh, I wonder if you might be able to comment. We know, you know from a customer standpoint, from an agent standpoint, we want to get them the information they want when they need it as right. simple as possible. But on the back end, you know, we, we look at how many partners Five Nines has and all the different technologies you work with and oh, my business needs you know, right. these seven letters in the alphabet, not these other things. Right. So how, how do you balance that from, sure. from a messaging and from a product standpoint? Well, one of the things realize is that one size doesn't fit all, right? Companies have, are of different size, they're of different complexity, uh, preferences along the way. So we really focus on how do you adapt the contact center to the needs of that business. And that could be 
sometimes they have preferred vendors. So I'm a Salesforce or an Oracle or a Microsoft or a ServiceNow or whom you name it, a shop. I want to continue to use that. Uh, it may be on workforce optimization that I want, uh, I, I have a certain set of capabilities I require that fits a particular vendor or not. So we really try to, and this is the beauty of the cloud, is we can host you know, elements in there in the case of like workforce optimization or integrate in the case of CRM to make that seamless. When you look at it from an agent perspective, it's all about giving them the, a common look and feel. You know, one term that's been really used a lot at this show is the single pane of glass. The one agent desktop where they can really navigate. Because we've all experienced when you call into a contact center and the agent is frustrated and they start complaining about the system. I'm sorry, I'm trying to figure this out. Oh, this darn system, oh, it's, I got to wait. Or I have to find your information. I don't care. I'm the consumer, I just want my problem solved. And frankly, the agent's frustrated. But by integrating it within a, uh, with the CRM, you can have all that information on the desktop, only the relevant information that the agent needs at that moment. You know, if I'm dealing with a purchase, then I need that information as an agent that's going to help me along the way. I don't need to worry about other factors. And I want to be able to customize that a little bit to my, the way I behave as an agent. So it is about convenience, uh, intuitiveness, you know, and, and, and just ease of use along the way. I'm curious, so here we are day three, almost done with Enterprise Connect 19. You've been at the event the whole time. What are some of the, the things that you're hearing, say, from the analyst community that is exciting you about, one, the direction that the contact center right. market is going in, and two, what 5.9 is going to be able right. to deliver the rest of the year and beyond? Right, you know, it's interesting. A couple years ago, the, uh, the buzz and the talk was, um, voice is dead. It's all about, everybody's going digital. And that was because of the increase in the number of uh, transaction interactions that occurred over email, chat, social, and like. Now, I was just talking to an analyst a little bit ago today, said, you know, it's really interesting, voice is hot again, voice is cool, because people are realizing voice has a very distinct role. Uh, and so, it's not your only digital channels, it's not your only, it's really part of that mix, back to our comment we had before. So that's one thing you're seeing that, you're seeing that with other vendors, you're seeing that with the conversations with customers, that it's really, it's part of the mix, and it's appropriate. Um, the other thing is, contact center's hot again. It's kind of you know, cool, and it's uh, because of that change that we talked about earlier, that uh, it's no longer about cost center. It's no longer about, oh, I have to answer that customer question, but now I play an integral role in that relationship my company has with the customer and, and how I can really reinforce the brand. So those are the things I think we're also seeing in, talking to the, um, the analysts as well. Uh, they're seeing that excitement, in, and also the, the conversations that are occurring at the event are very engaging. People are really thinking about how they can change their business. And you can feel that and you can hear Absolutely. that here. So, Scott, as you say, the contact center is hot again. Right. Stu and I thank you for joining Great. us on the program this thank afternoon. You. My pleasure, thank you. For Stu Miniman, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE. Yeah.